Well, this is certainly not the video I expected to be making tonight. Hello, everybody. Dokkan Assets here. Today, we are back with a another animation analysis video. And, uh, yeah, your screen does not deceive you. We are currently taking a look at the brand new Part 2 STR, LR, Bulma, and Oolong. Very, very interesting choice in terms of Part 2 unit, to say the least. I am still quite surprised that they didn't pick Demon King Piccolo, because I really thought that that was what they were going to go with for this Part 2, but it turns out we are getting Bulma and Oolong. So, let's go ahead and take a look at their animations. We will take a look at all of them first in one time speed, just checking that we're in there. And then we will go through them as well. I always like to say in the beginning of these videos, keep in mind, I am by no means a professional. I just watch Jokon animations all the time. So I like to think I know what makes them pretty good. Uh, so we are got, oh, we are got. I literally can't speak right now, bro. I'm still flabbergasted about this, to be honest. First of all, YouTube, uh, please don't take my video down for having this scene in it. It's, it's in the video game, bro. Fortnite IRL. I, I don't know what you want me to say to not get this video demonetized for having that in there. But anyway, <laughs> intro super attacks and active skill is what she has. Um, I will say, overall, I think that they are okay. Um, I don't think that they're anything crazy by any means, right? I definitely don't think that they are as good as Goku and Piccolo for sure. Um, but they're not bad. Definitely not bad. I will say, obviously, the intro and the active skill is what has the most work put into it. Like, that much is clear. Um, I mean, usually that is kind of what they do for modern day animations. They always make the voice stuff kind of look the best. However... I do kind of get some, I don't want to say free-to-play vibes, because vibes is certainly not the correct word to use when it comes to this type of thing. But I definitely get sort of like the feeling that I'm watching a free-to-play LR when I watch these essays. So let's go through and see if my mindset stays the same after we take a look at these in the frame-by-frame frame here. So first of all, starting off our scene, I forgot to put in the slow-mo, my bad. We have the birds obviously fluttering off, which is a pretty cool little touch. They are animated very, very nicely, and I do like this little pan up of the camera. That is pretty nice, with obviously Bulma's car coming into frame. I just realized, is Bulma old enough to drive? She's driving at the beginning of Dragon Ball. I don't know. Anyway... <laughs> I guess she isn't she like 16 or something in the Dragon Ball. I don't remember. Regardless, though, who cares? But they got dinosaurs in their universe, so I guess it doesn't really matter. We have Bulma pulling up. I do like the smoke effect there, right? Very, very cool. The door opening, by the way, I gotta say that honestly, weirdly enough to say, is part of like the cleanest part of this animation, if I do say so myself. The fact that that is uh, how they have the door animation look. It looks fantastic. I will say I never noticed this on Dragon Ball vehicles, but they have like a crank for the window, which is kind of funny because everything is so high tech, but they don't have automatic windows. To be fair, I guess automatic windows probably weren't invented when Dragon Ball was originally written written the manga so i guess that makes sense but regardless though um we have bulma step out of the vehicle which i think all of this looks pretty good right definitely no complaints from me there um and a cut to obviously looking from behind right basically kind of implying the fact that bulma got out of the car i think that's fine right everything for this scene looks all right in my mind this is a super nice shot right from bulma herself um the assets used here look very good obviously the dragon ball radar in her hand looks fantastic and the landscape i gotta say holy Holy cow, bro. They did such a good job on the landscape in this section for sure, right? From the mountains in the background to the grass to the road on the side that she is on. All of that looks really, really good. As well as the backgrounds here, right? Everything here looks really, really great. And of course, the car is very, very nicely made. Bulma's motto also looks good. I feel like she looks a little too tall here. Like, I feel, or maybe the car is just really big. I don't know. She kind of got that one piece leg going on where half of her body is just leg, to be honest with you. Um, but nonetheless, obviously, still a good looking shot for sure. 
And then, obviously, we have Bulma basically just talking about getting the Dragon Balls. Um, and a pretty good shot, right? Obviously, very simple. It makes sense that this is an intro animation looking like this, right? A lot of the time, they have a lot of these shots of, like, the character fully in frame and a couple of, like, establishing shots to bring them in. So, no complaints for me on the intro. I think the intro looks really nice, honestly. Um, it's definitely very, very good. Okay, so now we move on to the 12 key super attack. I gotta say, this is such a weird one because the 12 key is one of the shortest super attacks that I have ever seen. And the 18 key is like double or triple the size of the 12 key. So I'm wondering if she has something in her passive for additionals and maybe that's why they made it only, um, you know, like a couple seconds basically because then obviously you could get through the animation quickly if you get additionals. Um, I didn't read her kit too in depth. I just saw everybody on the timeline going, holy cow, she's the most crack support unit in the game. So I don't know if she has anything for additionals. You guys know I always prioritize the animations. The Yeah, however I said that. <laughs> Over the kit. Regardless though, we start off with Bulma tossing the capsule, which does look pretty good with her tossing it in the air and then grabbing it out of midair. That animation is pretty fluid. I will say her expression is strange for this scene. Like, it's kind of weird that she's not, like, either looking at the capsule. I guess she's supposed to be kind of, like, looking forward. But if you do notice, it's kind of interesting. Her hair has, like, a little bit of movement on, like, the little loose strands there. But also her eyeballs like kind of move a little bit you can see that they sort of shift a little bit with the animation i'm assuming that's as they're zooming in the assets are kind of moving into place but i don't feel like i've ever seen that like you can see it's a really hard detail to see but look at on her left eye you can see it move up there really strange I don't know why the animations work like that, but that is definitely a little yucky if I do say so myself. I will say the toss up into the air, I feel like her hand could be animated tossing this a little bit better. Again, I know this is probably a, a nitpick, but I mean, that is the whole point of this series to take a deeper dive into this. It just kind of looks like her hand is attached to a stick and someone just lifted up the stick, right? And now there goes, right? I do like at least that they do have a little bit of a change when she actually throws it, right? You can see that when it goes up, they change from her flat palm kind of being towards the sky to kind of shifting her hand a little bit more to sort of imply the movement um, that they're going for there. The capsule looks fine though, obviously spinning around in the sky. Of course, the explosion with the classic boom, right? And then of course, the blicky flies down. What did they do to Bulma here? <laughs> this is like a transitional frame. And Bulma's really not even the focus of this shot, so I understand why she doesn't necessarily look like, you know, the most high quality here. But holy cow, bro, not only is that expression so strange, that angle and those assets are definitely not doing Bulma justice here. But obviously, the gun looks fine. Um, loading it up looks pretty good. I like that they have this little red background to kind of imply, you know, a hey, red alert, right, type of thing. I don't know if I like this flip, I will say, when she's kind of flipping it into position to then like load it, right? This kind of catches me off guard. I feel like this is a little bit too quick. I think that there should be a couple more frames in between that. Um, but overall, okay, obviously loading it up and everything, you know, pulling the pump, whatnot looks good. The card art, I will say, looks fantastic. However, it's really weird because, like, I feel like the usual Dokkan effects aren't on this. They're literally just, like, shaking the card art and they have the SA in front of it. It just looks weird to me. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. There's definitely something off about this. Also, it's really funny. I swear this is the last time I'll pause on the card art. They wanted to fill the space behind Oolong because he's so short and Bulma's so tall compared to him. So they put a rock behind him. <laughs> <laughs> that is mad funny so then we have bulma turn around with the blicky in hand this does look pretty good i will say this entire sequence um of bulma turning around with all these anime-esque effects um definitely looks pretty good right i think the turn has just enough frames obviously the little effect um coming off of the barrel right and on nonetheless excuse me um the shells right coming out of the gun do look pretty good too I will say I'm a bit disappointed that it goes from that very nice looking scene to this because this just screams free to play unit to me this angle and this quality of assets the background certainly looks nice and I do like the little effect it for the text um, sort of like automatopoeia right kind of like pow sort of thing they actually have little like bullet hole marks 
in the text, which is definitely a very nice little touch there. Um, with Bulma obviously spraying a monster carrot there, monster rabbit, I don't remember what his name is off the top of my head, something like that. Um, and obviously all of the bullets going into him there. I kind of wish that there was just a little bit more. Like, I feel like that this essay, and it just ends right there. I feel like it, it cuts off at a really weird spot. Like, I feel like there should be more after this essay. Like, it just feels weird ending here. Like, I feel like something else should happen. But yeah, I don't know. With all the buildup from this, right? Like, you know, having her grab it, turn it around, load it up, and then, you know, this really cool shot of her firing it, right? Only to go to, you know, like, I don't know. It just feels kind of lame in my opinion i wish there was a little bit more but then we go to the 12 key super attack here which first of all um before anything the interesting thing about this is that the enemy sprite because i just want to skip ahead here so you see that the enemy sprite uh is hello there we go the pilaf machine uh, maybe this is supposed to be, like, the enemy sprite is, like, kind of listening to their conversation. You know, it's one of those, like, classic anime moments where the villain's standing there as the characters are arguing with each other. And the villain's like, oh, hello, I'm standing right here, you know, like, type of thing. But it's just really weird that the enemy sprite is just there, right? It's just kind of off-putting, I gotta be honest. It probably wouldn't be as noticeable if it wasn't the peel-off machine, because obviously that's a pretty big, like, character sprite, because, of course, they're, like, big... You know, they're in a giant robot, but still kind of jarring, to say the least. But nonetheless, look at this, by the way, in terms of like how this is, right? The 18 key super attack ends here. And look at this is the start of the 18 key and the 12 key is like here. I don't know. It's so short in comparison. It's really weird. But yeah, obviously Bulma getting mad at Oolong. This looks just fine. I will say this could definitely have some more animation. Literally Bulma just like squats down basically like for two seconds right and i don't know maybe this feels so empty to me because this part isn't voiced i mean obviously it's a super attack but it's still just weird right like this feels kind of empty i think is a good way to describe it for the scene but anyway we have oolong here um readying up right raising his hand i think the animation of oolong looks just fine right it's got plenty of frames in between it for sure um with obviously him getting angry and then you know transforming into the missile right i think that looks just fine i will say this cut is also really weird because they don't show anything in between this of like oolong you know like actually like then appearing there as the missile or anything like that um they immediately just cut to bam uh, there he is flying off, which is just kind of a a big jump, I feel like, and not logic necessarily, but like scenes, right? It just kind of feels like a huge transition um, for there not to be something else in between. Also, the perspective, or I guess maybe more like the scale, is all kinds of awful in this scene when it comes to everything that we've just seen like previously first of all when it comes to bulma herself if we're thinking that these are these giant mountains that the backgrounds of dragon ball are known for bulma is huge compared to these mountains and the grass that's supposed to be on the ground like this path right is not a path that I assume is just like wide enough for a single car, which is kind of how it would feel if Bulma was actually the size, because that really wouldn't make sense with how big these mountains are, especially with how big this mountain is right next to the road in comparison to it, right? I would think that the road is super wide and small because of how big the mountains are, right? But if that's the case, then Bulma's a giant. But if Bulma is actually this size walking on the road, these things are also a lot smaller than they are in the anime and how they feel in a lot of these other scenes that we've seen them, right? Like, look at how far away Bulma is and in comparison to these rocks, right? Like, in these previous scenes, right? Like, even in the background, right, for this one, like, you can tell these mountains are huge because Bulma is standing so far away. Just very weird, like, here too, right? 
I don't know. Just a very weird bit of uh, perspective on that scene for sure. I will say the coloring is also something that kind of throw me off a little bit. Both of these are ways that I've seen Dragon Ball colored before um, in terms of like the color palette at play. But you have all of these like bright colors at play and the sky is this like bright blue, right? And then you go to this, go from here. Let's go just Oolong being there right look at the bright sky right all these greens right to this very dreary color palette and the sky is nowhere near as blue it kind of looks like they lowered the saturation on the scene i don't know especially considering the big jump from oolong there is you know not very fluid in between and kind of trips you up a little bit going from you know literally just the boom to then the rocket flying is already trippy enough the color change also is kind of whack in my brain to be honest with you but nonetheless, continuing on, obviously Oolong flying looks just fine. Does he actually, is his fire animated? No, they did not even animate the fire on Oolong. Yes, <laughs> the smoke looks really good, I will say. I think the smoke looks fine as they kind of have it stretch and dissipate a little bit, even though it is the same asset of the smoke, right? Like they don't have it move at all. It is literally just getting stretched. I think it looks okay. But the fire not moving is uh, a little weird for sure. But nonetheless, um, we obviously have Oolong fly off. See, look, the smoke looks good moving like that. This is fine, although I will say this definitely gives me, again, I don't want to use the word vibes because vibes is not the best word to use, but I don't know what else to use in this scenario, right? Free, huge free-to-play vibes on this particular scene right here. This looks like it's from a free-to-play unit. And funny enough, the fire is animated in that scene too, which is ironic that it wasn't before. But obviously we have it explode against the peel-off machine, which I will say, um, this explosion effect is actually really good. Yeah, see the fire's moving right there. This explosion, when he makes contact with the peel-off machine, is actually really good. So obviously from the moment of impact, you have it grow right out. And then of course you have the cloud of smoke and the smoke is kind of moving around, right? As everything is flying around, obviously the enemy flying um, down to the ground, right? You have the anime speed lines, right? That all looks good. Um, and then we have Bulma, obviously a look from the back, looking at her grabbing the capsules there, um, which this shot does look pretty good. I will say the one thing about this that does kind of bother me is the sleeve there is one shot where bulma's sleeve does a really weird thing like this looks fine right you can see that it kind of looks like that the fabric is actually moving correctly with her arm in the way that this like looks as it's going down right it's not just like even though they are stretching the acid it makes it look like it's properly how the fabric looks but there is one where did that go there the asset literally just changes and her sleeve gets bigger because they're changing the asset that's connected to her hand to look from 9 to 10, right? Obviously, the hand changing would be fine and even the arm a little bit, but that sleeve changing like that and getting literally bigger, right? Like, I don't even think if this change was here, like, and that was all it was, it, you know, wouldn't be as much of a problem for me. But the fact that it literally just gets bigger on her arm is so weird. But anyhow... Picking up the capsule looks fine. Um, and then, of course, we have the car appear once again. Again, like, that whole section basically was, like, the length of the 12 key. At least it feels like it to me. And we have all this extra, right? By the way, again, a repeat um, of the 12 key super. That is kind of lazy, if I got to be honest with you. Um, I understand that, like, you know, it's the same sort of thing that's happening, but... That definitely feels a little bit lazy to me reusing that particular animation, um, you know, for the 18 key. Obviously, then we have it explode. Um, and basically, they just changed the PNG to be the rocket launcher, which obviously Bulma looks a little bit different here because, of course, you know, you have her gloved um, and, of course, her regular hand there in the frame um, as she grabs the rocket launcher. There we go. As you can see, right, obviously this is different from before, of course, at this scene, because before when we had the uh, the firearm fall down, <laughs> we had that, yeah. Let's look at this shot one more time, right, just to make sure that this is, like, quite literally the exact same. Yeah, quite literally the exact same from the throw with the hand change, right, to the color of the capsule. That's another thing that I want to look at real quick, right, is the capsule that she picks up it's blue here and then the one that she throws it's a little bit of a different tint of blue but basically the same right 
And the one that she picks out of the capsule container, she points to... Let me see. I think it was 10, right? Because this is where she goes to pick it up. Go back. Was it 9 or 10? 10. Okay. And 10 is a lot more of like a purple color as you can see there, right? You can't even see it, which is interesting. They kind of block that out, probably on purpose, so you're not really like thinking about the color. But it's clear that the colors coincide, right? We can see here that, right, like the yellow capsules, the one, two, three are yellow here, right? The seven is this particular shade of blue, right? The purples on the bottom, right? The pinks. And because they reuse the animation, uh, you know, the color is not the same uh, as the capsule should be. It definitely wasn't light blue. That is a minor continuity error for sure. But if they were going to reuse the animation and just be lazy like that, then they should have at least just changed the color of the capsule, you know? That, to me, just kind of tells me that they were being really lazy with these. Um, even if it's something small like that, it's those little things, you know? Anyway, I will say, I do like Bulma catching this, right? This is a pretty cool transition of obviously having her hands out. And then when she actually catches it, right, there, she kind of feels the recoil from actually grabbing it out of the sky. That is a pretty cool little detail and a nice little cut between scenes. I will say it is kind of funny with the mountains being so pixelated in the background. If you look at the pixels on the edges of these, right, it is some straight squares my guy <laughs> and i'm sure that's probably because in a second here when bulma fires the rocket right um you kind of don't really see these uh, as much right in the frame because they're going by so fast and not to mention i'm sure that this is a previous background asset right that they just used and kind of like this zoomed up state right so obviously this is meant to be seen farther away and because it's so zoomed in it looks all pixelated like this the actual rocket launch though definitely looks pretty good i will say i definitely like this i like that they have the little change of the colors right to obviously you know sort of symbolize like the fire that's coming off of it um as bulma fires it right that is pretty cool you can obviously see that she also recoils back from the blast too which is pretty neat i will say i understand why they did it but it is a little bit weird that they have her recoil again because it's almost like going back in time a couple seconds, you know, for her to kind of get the recoil again when she should, I guess, just kind of already be stanced up like this. But then again, I would much rather have something have movement than just be a static PNG, which would literally just be this except with the smoke, right? I would much rather it be like that than just have her already leaning back. Um, you know, from the impact, even if that little bit of continuity, I guess, would technically make more sense. But I think it looks cooler this way. I will say, the movement on Bulma's um, hair feels like... Maybe it's just because I look so in-depth when the free-to-play Bulma came out for the last one that we got in this outfit. A lot of these animations remind me of those in terms of how they animated like Bulma herself, which is, I think, another reason why it makes me feel like these are very free-to-play-esque. I don't know. It's just the one solid PNG of her ponytail moving. Like, I guess I don't really know what else he would do, but I don't know. It just feels very basic to me. The explosion looks all right, by the way, too. And we now move on to the active skill, which is definitely very, very nice looking, if I do say so myself. We obviously have Bulma move the rock to find the Dragon Ball, which is pretty cool. I will say, a lot of the animation in Bulma's beginning section here does look very stiff, right? If we look at how she's moving away the rocks again, it kind of looks like that her arms, or I guess it would be her wrists with her hands on the end, are attached to sticks, right? And they're literally just moving the sticks like a puppeteer, right? Moving them away is kind of the way that the movement looks. The shine on the Dragon Ball does look very nice. And again, here for Bulma's movement, it just feels very stiff. Right? I think that's kind of my very overall complaint with a lot of these is that her animations just feel very stiff in nature and not very fluid. This is obviously a cool shot, obviously just zooming in that she found the last Dragon Ball. Nice little fade to the Dragon Balls. Of course, them actually glowing looks pretty good. And then we have Bulma standing over them, right? bringing shinron forth with that with that shot looking good and of course the little light coming off also looks very very nice you have the clouds approach because of course whenever you summon shinron the sky gets all dark this looks great by the way the clouds holy cow they did a fantastic job on those boys coming in that looks great if i do say so myself definitely like that a lot 
cut back to the Dragon Balls glowing. Again, very, very nice. And very cool little detail here. Obviously, Bulma's shadow is moving because, of course, the light in front of her is moving. That is a very nice little attention to detail there, which is pretty cool. Obviously, the light exploding into the sky and, of course, having that classic electricity effect. Is that not centered? That is definitely not centered, and it's not just because of the fact that it's moving. Like, it's literally not centered at all. Interesting. All right, well, we have the light Shinron, obviously, coming up towards the sky and swirling around before he then takes the stage. It's kind of interesting that they didn't have the light kind of, like, dissipate off of him, and they opted to just kind of go the route of the light, you know, just transition, basically. We have the light kind of come off of Shinron a little bit with the afterglow there sort of fading away. And then you have Shinron standing in front of Bulma. I will say, this is pretty cool because this look for Shinron is definitely a lot more Dragon Ball-esque, but also kind of leaning towards the side of Z, which is cool because like... You know, we've definitely seen Dragon Ball-esque Shinrons in Dokkan before. Um, Demon King Piccolo, I think, is a great example of that. Shinron almost looks like Chibi, but I think this is kind of a good middle ground and definitely a very good look for my man. His snout is also super long. <laughs> Bobo talks here. I will say, I don't remember if in this scene you actually don't hear what she says, and that's the reason why. But I will say, this isn't really regarding the animations, I suppose, but I don't know where else I mentioned this. She doesn't actually say anything. Like, there's no audio for this active skill for this particular frame right here, where it's clear, like, the whole point is that she summoned Shinron, right? I like that they still have a little glow on the bottom, by the way. And obviously, you know, she's making the wish, right? It's just weird that they don't have any speech for her, right? Because he obviously she sees Shinron grant it, right? His eyes glow, of course, and then he begins to speak. Just so weird that they don't have any audio for her. Like, even if she doesn't speak in the actual scene, right? I still feel like they should have put something there because it also makes this feel a lot more empty. Granted, I guess I don't know what they would have put there because, like... For this being an active skill, you know, obviously they're not going to have her say, like, you know, <laughs> give me an additional super, <laughs> activate my active skill, you know, like fighters when they say something like, you know, when you, like, get the, uh, all the Dragon Balls and fighters and it's like, revive my allies or whatever. Obviously, it's not going to be something like that, but... I don't know. I mean, even if it was just like the regular wish that's from the scene, I still feel like that would have been fine. I mean, this is almost kind of like a what if card if Bulma actually got the wish because obviously Oolong steals it from her. But like, I don't know. It's just kind of weird that they don't have her speak. I feel like they should have just had her say something. Um, but nonetheless, we do have it. Shinron obviously grant the wish. With the little glowy eyes, which definitely looks pretty cool. Your wish has been granted with Shinron speaking it out. And then we have Shinron disappear, I believe, after he's done talking. It takes him a minute to kind of get everything out. And then we have Shinron dissipate. I love this, by the way. Holy cow. My boy Glowin looks fantastic. I really, really like that look. Looks really cool. And then we have Shinron go up into the sky and the Dragon Ball shoot off. I definitely like the way that the Dragon Ball shoot off. I think that that looks really, really nice. However, I will say... I don't want to give this one as an L to Dokkan because I don't remember if it looks like this in the anime, but I'm fairly sure it doesn't, where Shinron just gets engulfed in a ball of light and you can still see the edges of him on the edge of the ball, and you can still see his claws as they make the asset fade out, <laughs> and then they have the Dragon Balls dissipate, right? I don't remember it being like that. I feel like Shinron had a lot more of a dramatic exit than just the PNG flying away. That also feels kind of lazy to me, but that one could be Dokkan um, doing that for sure. I will say the end of this is literally just the clouds and Bulma smiling up at the sky, which this shot looks pretty good, obviously. I definitely like the um, sort of kind of making you feel like this is 3D, even though it's not obviously with, of course, them kind of, you know, showing you this perspective. The one other thing that I will note about this is that I feel like Bulma's lip flaps are really weird here. If you take a look at when she's talking, it definitely just looks like they're stretching the PNG open and closed. Which, I mean, I guess is fine, and that's how lip flaps work, but it kind of feels more like a flash animation for her mouth specifically with the way that it's moving. I don't know. It's just a little bit off-putting to me, I will say. But yeah, that is Bulma's animations. So, overall... 
I don't think I'm the biggest fan of these. Obviously, when Bulma pulls out the Blicky, that's definitely funny. I'm sure that's going to get meme to high heck in the Delcon community. I will not be surprised if it does. I think that the intro and the active skill do look pretty good, right? I think that there is some good stuff in here. However, there is definitely a lot of things that I feel like they still could have improved on. Again, these animations still very much so give me the vibe of a free-to-play unit, right? Definitely a lot more so the 12-key and 18-key super attacks, of course. A lot more so than um, the active and the intro, right? Yeah, look at that. That 12-key was so short compared to the active, or the active skill, the 18-key rather, excuse me. You have this whole extra part at the end here too, and it just feels longer in general. But the fact that they definitely cut corners in some spots, and I don't know, I know it's not that big of a deal for some people, but the fact that they not only just reused that animation with her throwing the capsule up, but the fact that they didn't even bother to hide it by at least just changing the color of the capsule so it would make a little bit more sense thematically just kind of shows me that either that they didn't care or that this card was rushed kind of i don't know this feels like one of those dokkan units that they're just putting out something to have an lr be there for the part two and then focus on something later down the line which i always wish that you know more cards would get more love put into them for the ones that are kind of in those in between periods and i understand that's just kind of how game development works you got to work on your bigger stuff but i don't know to me, I don't know if I would go to this extreme necessarily, but this card just feels kind of soulless, I guess is a good way to describe it. Again, I think that might be a little bit higher tier on the criticism word tier list, if you understand what I'm saying. But that's kind of the feeling that I get from this card when I look at these animations. So definitely let me know what you think in the comment section below i would be very curious to hear what y'all have to say definitely let me know if you're going to be summoning for boma i know that her kit is very good um and i know that that is something that i do notice typically a lot of the time um when they have animations by the way this is something else i wanted to notice real quick because i noticed this later they do blur out the back of shinron and have the front of him focused that is very cool very nice attention to detail one thing i will say is that i do feel like whenever i feel like this about a set of animations typically the card is really good and i don't think that's a coincidence that a lot of the time i feel like when the animations are not so good right obviously there are very good cards that have fantastic animations right but they make cards super cracked that the animations are clearly not as much work put into them or not as good looking right I definitely think that that isn't a, you know, stretch to say that, right? And I think that that is certainly a noticeable pattern. So it's just kind of unfortunate, but I suppose it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy. And I will catch you in the next one. Dokkan Assets out. Peace.